Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, again, a very warm welcome and if you're returning, um, an equally warm welcome to you and please don't forget to like, subscribe and share if you find the analysis that I provide um, on the Trading 180 uh, YouTube channel useful and uh, definitely uh, press that like button as it gets, it helps the uh, the uh, algorithm I guess get the video out there and uh, get it ranked and uh, really the quality content out to the people and traders that really are interested in this uh, in this subject. So. Um, just a quick recap on uh, what we and our approach to uh, trading is um, we apply fundamental analysis to establish our directional bias and then apply technical analysis, which is basically supply and demand strategies to time our trade entries, risk man management and establish profit targets. So let's get into uh, the week ahead and the upcoming uh, potential events that are market moving. So in the week ahead, um, all eyes turn to US jobs report due on Friday which will probably point to a continued recovery in the labor market elsewhere Fed Chair Powell testifies before Congress while a highly anticipated OPEC uh, meeting is expected to offer guidance into the coalition's crude output plans um, for anyone who uh, is looking to trade uh, oil. So investors also await key data uh, including worldwide manufacturing and services PMIs, third quarter GDP figures for Australia, that's going to be important, um, as well as Canada. Um, and the Eurozone inflation report and Japan industrial output and retail trade. So definitely some market moving news, but um, well, fundamentally, but uh, whether it will move in the in, in the intended direction or the expected direction is another thing. And this is due to uh, some risk of sentiment regarding the, um, the new strain of COVID, which we'll get into. But let's get into the uh, technicals and some in-depth fundamentals and risk sentiment analysis uh, and starting off on the dollar index at DXY. And the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies, of the major currencies like the euro, the pound and the yen. And we've basically come up into, um, or we were, you know, the, the, the dollar was pretty much making higher highs, higher lows. And this is really due to uh, the expectation that the Federal Reserve are looking to a taper um, bond purchases and be high rates within the next uh, potentially uh, in, in the next uh, six to 12 months, right? So um, hiking rates generally are positive and appreciate a currency. But what we've seen on Friday uh, was the um, uh, the new strain, I guess, of the uh, coronavirus. So um, Moderna says that the new vaccine for um, Omicron, which is the name of the new uh, COVID um, strain, may be ready in early 2022. So dangerous new variant could uh, evade current shots, CMO says, and company uh, mobilized hundreds on Thanksgiving to start work. And uh, let me just read a couple of uh, paragraphs. So Moderna Inc. Chief Medical Officer Paul Burton said he suspects the new Amoricon coronavirus variant uh, may elude current vaccines. And if so, a reformulated shot could be available early in the new year. So what does that mean? That means that they are already working on a solution and um, the market generally tends to price in uh, or wants to price in the future, right? So it's not, it's not pricing in what's, it prices in obviously what's happening now, but from the expectation of what um, may happen in the future, right? So um, it needs to reprice and revalue what what they think, I guess, exchange rates and uh, the value of uh, commodities are potentially if this new strain causes issues and problems to global growth, right? But then there is the counter argument to that, which would be, well, if it's not as deadly as expected, or if the current vaccines actually do work, then it's like, well, what is all the fuss and all the worry about? So then the market then will have to potentially reprice um, uh, you know the, uh, the the value of of assets and exchange rates, which means that you could potentially have um, you know um, um, higher um, uh, commodity prices and potential exchange rates, right? Depending on uh, whether you're trading risk off or risk on currencies. Um, 
So we should know about the ability of the current vaccine to provide protection in the next couple of weeks, Spurton says, um, said on Sunday on the BBC's Andrew Marr show. So at the moment, a lot of uncertainty. And um, again, uh, I, should, I should really kind of refer to um, the Trading 180 spreadsheet and one of the tabs that we have, which is our, just a reminder of our risk on risk off guide. And uh, in general, in case you don't know, currencies that generally tend to go down in a risk off environment um, is uh, other commodity currencies and safe haven currencies generally will go uh, will rise as money flows into safe haven um, assets and currencies right same thing with stocks stocks then generally go down commodity currencies um, sorry commodities generally go down and it's what you're seeing is basically what's happening even though gold and silver is slightly different um, at the moment i thought gold would have had a better uh, a, a um, a stronger reaction to what's happened but the point being is that in a risk off environment um, safe havens are gonna um, safe haven currencies are gonna appreciate but if for example it turns out that the safe haven currencies or the the, 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 the vaccine isn't as uh, deadly or as, as much as a concern as expected then um, what's recently happened i guess with money flowing into safe haven currencies money will flow back into those commodity currencies right and then you know you're looking at really kind of buying at bargains but we have to obviously um see what happens with the development of the vaccine so uh, that's how we really play the um uh, the risk on and risk off currencies but uh, at the moment you know it's a it's a pretty much a wait and see environment doesn't mean you've got to trade every single day it just means that you've got to sit on your hands and wait for the um uh, for the for the picture to become a bit clearer right but the positive around this is that uh if we have to make a brand new vaccine i think it's going to be early 2022 which is pretty much you know the next month or two uh before um is that's really going to be available in large quantities the remarkable thing about the m RNA vaccines, the Moderna platform, is that we can move very fast. So um, risk off may not last for too long if there is a vaccine that can uh, help with the new um, 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 Omi, Omicron, sorry, Omicron um, uh, vaccine, um, sorry, um, the Omicron variant. Sorry, I'm getting a bit tongue twisted. Anyways, um, so there's that, right? That's, that's the over riding sentiment at the moment um so again we have probably more risk off going into next week but if things do start to dissipate and things aren't uh, as bad as they were once feared the u.s jobs report which is going to be one of the things that are um, going to be watched uh is expected to actually show another strong increase so uh u.s employees probably added more than half a million workers for a second straight month in november pushing the labor market closer to a full recovery despite swirling inflation worries and persistent covid19 infections so there is some positivity coming into the dollar um and uh, but let's see what happens the so payrolls are expected to rise by 550,000 and the unemployment rate to edge down to 4.5 percent according to the median experts um sorry es estimates of economists ahead of the labor department data due friday in washington so a strong jobs report coupled with another monthly jump in consumer prices in labor department out in december 10th could seal a decision at the federal reserve's mid-december meeting to accelerate the tapering of bond purchases but a new pandemic wave might still scupper that a fear that caused market jitters on friday so that's pretty much you know what's um what the uh, thinking is right um we don't know whether the virus is going to um cause the federal reserve to not um be so uh, hawkish in their um in their uh, monetary policy but let's see what happens obviously um come monday tuesday and in the following weeks and whether the virus is a concern if um the, you know, the virus turns out not to be a concern and the dollar has pulled back then it could be a really good buy trade uh, on the dollar i mean i'm still overall bullish on the dollar uh, as long as the data supports that narrative so um let's see what happens so from a technical analysis perspective we could see prices obviously come down on the dollar index looking for buy trades not necessarily on the dollar index but more on dollar pairs and you just use the dollar index as um 
as a confluence, right? So if prices do come down here, you start to see some bullish price action and you go on the dollar yen, for example, or the dollar Swiss, and you see the same similar setup, then you're looking for potential buy trades. But again, let's see what happens with risk sentiment. But I do think these uh, these pullbacks are probably necessary anyway, because you, you have had, um, you know, quite a large move to the upside. And then when you get these um, quite vertical moves, you generally tend to get um, a steeper pullback. So let's see what happens with the dollar um, and the dollar index. Moving on to the um, the dollar yen. And again, the yen is a risk off currency. So you would expect this to happen. But again, risk off can actually just push prices to where you want to be a buyer. And in fact, um, I did actually want to be a buyer down here. But let's see what happens. I think this is a really nice buy if market sentiment does turn around and the vaccine um you know does for example work on the new strain or for example the new strain isn't as bad as they you know the the, the maybe the world health organization are, are thinking so um yeah i do think a buy trade in and around this area depending on obviously what happens on the monday tuesday and how the market's reacting is a, i think is a decent buy or that um, 111.50s are going to be an even better bargain. So let's see. That's that's my part, um, uh, path of least resistance. If you are trading risk off, for example, if you want to trade more of a risk off uh, um, uh, currency, mean that you're looking to buy and take advantage of the risk off sentiment, then you're looking for pullbacks into that demand zone. If prices do come up to that uh 115 area before looking at any kind of short trades so that's where your first area to look for short trades would be unless prices make lower highs and lower lows uh, for example if you see something like this that's uh one two three and then you see for example prices do something like that um then you're looking for a pullback into that area because that would be where supply is before looking at um, a, a short trade so first area to get short uh, or if you see prices basically do something like this lower highs lower lows then you're looking at a, a sell trade sorry and I say a buy trade but buy trade for the dot for the US uh, uh, sorry for the Japanese yen um, in that area or in that area right uh, moving on to the dollar Swiss pretty much similar thing going on here and uh, again the Swiss franc does react um, is a safe haven and currency and uh, money tends to flow into that area there so again the short trades if you see anything like that happen and you want to get short on the uh, on the on the uh, US dollar against the Swiss franc or you're looking at again lower highs lower lows and then a pull back into one of those lower highs areas because again that would be where the strongest area of supply is but at the moment this demand zone from this hidden demand zone area here around this 92 uh, round number it would be actually a decent buy technically but again we'd have to really kind of see um, what the uh, the variant is uh, is saying um, on the Monday uh, morning into into the rest of the you know the week or the next couple of weeks moving on to the dollar CAD and the, and the uh, CAD again is one of the commodity currencies uh, as you would expect to kind of sell off oil is, is selling off so and the uh, the the US dollar acts and can act as a safe haven currency. So you're seeing what's pretty much happening uh, with price as expected. We know we're making higher highs, higher lows. And again, on the Friday, money flew into the uh, the US dollar and out of the uh, commodity currency, which is the Canadian dollar. But um, the expectation, I think, um, for the um, Canadian dollar, I think fundamentally is for actually a lower um, Canadian dollar as I've, we've been uh, watching and reading, I guess, in the um, for some of the bank uh, analysis that we look at but from a risk off sentiment perspective you would expect the path of least resistance to be to actually the upside so let's see what happens uh, here I do think that is a is, is again a decent buy um, in a risk off if you're looking for a pullback into this one to 650 if oil continues to you know want to sell off then any pullback into that demand zone is really where you want to look for some buy trades if you're looking for a buy against the uh the, the us dollar and, and the buy against the um and buying a canadian dollar then um ultimately i think this level's probably been touched several times and once the level is touched you know um a few times for example once twice three times four times in fact that's the first time sorry uh, two and then three for me i think um this 
level starts to become a bit weaker, you might want to look for something just above that area there um, for a potential uh, buy trade on the Canadian dollar and a short trade on the uh, US dollar if you're looking at this currency pair. That would be where the short, the best short anyway, the cheapest short would be. Um, moving on to the uh, the New Zealand, uh, the, sorry, the uh, the British pound, uh, US dollar. And uh, again, we've got lower highs, lower lows being made. Uh, not surprising when you think about, again, from a risk off sentiment perspective, I think I'll move this down slightly. Let's see if, yeah, maybe around here. Just so that we haven't got so much um, uh, demand and then we can actually put that down here. So again, the path of these resistance, and I've been saying this for the past few weeks, um, ever since really we kind of came up to this area that we were looking at, you know, short trades. But um, uh, I think any pullback into that zone might be a, might be a, uh, a, a decent uh, sell uh, and buying the uh, US dollar. Um, technically, I do like that. But fundamentally, I don't really like the pair. But in a risk-off environment, I think the um, the US dollar should want to uh, uh, strengthen over the uh, the British pound. So I do think that that area there is is a decent uh, um, sell trade. If you are looking to buy the pound for whatever reason, I think there is um, going to be uh, some sort of. Uh, announcement that the Bank of England will potentially look to high rates, but I don't think they will, um, especially again uh, due to COVID risks that can still derail the U UK recovery. And if the uh, COVID does potentially get worse, then um, I think central banks around the world are not really going to look to hike in that environment environment because the um, hikes really uh, need to be supported by a growing economy and if the economy is not going to grow and in fact it might potentially go into you no know, more lockdowns it might stagnate and contract then um, central banks are going to uh, look into the future and they're not necessarily going to want to um, uh, high rates in that environment but the Bank of England chief economist Hugh Pill said that new variants of the coronavirus and the risk of another lockdown are some of the risks that could blow off track the view of policymakers that the UK economic recovery is uh, re maturing. So uh, speaking on Friday as the emergence of the new variant of COVID-19 world global markets, Pill said the arrival of any new strain could disrupt the Bank of England's guidance of so monetary policy that rates have to rise in coming months. So pretty much as I was saying, right, you, to, to hike in, a, in, in this environment is, um, is a bit of economic suicide potentially. And even before the, the, uh, the COVID uh, variant really started to get going, um, there, was, uh, there was this article um, and it was really the question of will the UK interest rates rise in December and history suggests no. And an, an interesting statistic is that the central bank's only December hike in 45 years came in 1994. And really one of the main reasons that central banks generally don't want to hike in December um, is is because, and that's obviously they're really kind of forced to due to inflation, is because you've got to think about um, uh, uh, retail spending right if if and and uh, and household uh, mortgages and if people were concerned more about expensive prices and and borrowing costs and lending costs going going up then um, they're going to spend less throughout Christmas, which then again hurts the economy. So it's not the smartest thing to do. And it's not something that the central banks generally do. And as we know, you know in the last 45 years, the only uh, bank hike in December came in 1994. So, um, you know, here we go. Christmas is a little more than a week away from the December 16th rate decision. And policy makers led by Governor Andrew Bailey have been pointing out reasons why they might hold off on rates. Those factors may have uh, may leave the Bank of England reluctant to disrupt the bumpy recovery from the pandemic with a bout of monetary tightening until after the holidays are passed. And that makes, you know, all the sense in the world to hike just before Christmas. And, um, you know, families might be struggling to, you know, pay, repay their mortgage payments um in december uh, as well as you know you, you can't we'll say you can't but um it wouldn't make that much sense but again central banks might be forced into it if if um inflation keeps going higher but let's see i think now that the uh, covid 
uh, um, new strain is is really out. I can't really see them. I think the probability of them really hiking rates is is uh, probably slim, very very slim. Which again, looking at this technically, would make all the sense in the world if you you know you do get a bit of a pullback to eventually start to short. Right, so continue shorting, and uh, the uh, trend should continue to the downside uh, for at least this year. Next year, when things start to maybe turn around, that might be a buying opportunity. But I wouldn't necessarily buy the the uh, the pound against the US dollar. Right, you'd want to buy it against a weaker currency. Anyways, um, those are pretty much your two options. Either looking to start buying now the pound, which I wouldn't suggest. But if put the pound does pull back into that area, there you want to be. Um, and you want to look to trade trade the uh, the pound dollar. I think again the path of least resistance would be um, to the downside, and that would be the uh, the area that I would look towards. Of course, not financial advice, and this is not any kind of trade calls. I was just talking about if I was uh, trading this currency pair. Um, moving on to the euro dollar, and the euro dollar um, had a bit of an up there, a bit of a pullback. Um, I was saying to the guys in the group, I think this is probably more just liquidity driven rather than it really being uh, any kind of euro strength because um, regardless of how you slice it, I think the uh, the euro is still the weaker out of the two and um, the, the dollar is uh, still the dominant currency, the stronger currency when it comes to monetary policy. So any pullbacks into these areas, I think, are going to be really nice uh, sell trades are opportunities doesn't mean that you know i'm not going to say that prices are going to definitely reverse around here of course it depends on your entry it depends on the, your entry trigger it depends on you know your uh, your strategy etc and um but for me uh, i think uh any kind of short trades the, the bigger the pullback i think the better the price so you know um any pullbacks if i see a, a, a potential entry things line up then that's going to be a decent short if i don't and prices come up here then that's going to be the better short right for me so um so that's where my um my my uh, uh trading direction is in but uh let's see but the uh when it comes to the ecb the ecb doesn't need to intervene on inflation for now panetta says so in an increase in europe inflation is temporary and no need to act which pretty much means that they're not looking to hike rates anytime soon which again would you know lead you to believe that they want the uh they're not looking to appreciate their uh, currency uh at this moment whereas the uh um the federal reserve are so ecb doesn't want to doesn't need to follow the fed in monetary policy choices so they're going to lag you know behind um the um the, the federal reserve's monetary policy and strengthening their, their 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 currency right but also as well you also got uh, fastest inflation in euros history set to raise pressure on the ecb so there is some pressure coming in um potentially uh, because of inflation and the ecb may be you know forced to potentially try and talk up the euro but when it comes to actually doing it um who knows i, I don't think they will and especially again given the backdrop of covid um you know cases there's also been a lot of uh, disruption i think it was in austria with, with mandatory mandatory um vaccines and i think germany and as well as the netherlands so um it's uh, a bit of a mess in europe at the moment so hiking rates at the moment i don't think is is uh, is likely of course anything can happen but uh, and this is a game of probabilities but if we look at the euro again i think the path leaf resistance is really continued to the downside um and but let's see what happens with that uh moving on to the australian dollar us dollar and again commodity currencies are you know the sell right you've got to sell the commodity currencies um or you're likely to sell the commodity currencies especially when we're in a, a risk-off environment so any pullbacks into any kind of supply zones would be really where you're looking at i do like this technically for a buy but technicals are not really the driving force behind my buying or selling decisions um i do think this is a really really nice technical zone but um fundamentally it's a bit of a chance right if if monday comes along and uh things are uh looking worse for the global outlook and a lot of more uncertainty you can expect you know prices to really kind of probably come down to more of this uh, 70 cent area and this more of this demand zone rather than uh you know reacting to this demand zone but who knows it could be some profit taking going on but as long as risk is off the path to these resistance is to the downside so any pullbacks um is probably best to look for any kind of short trades um but if again price if uh, sorry the uh, sentiment does turn around um, and we get back more into a risk 
on environment then this actually looks like a really nice zone to look for uh, some some buy trades i think um and gold right so gold didn't react uh, like the other commodity currencies typically do um and i say commodity currencies but commodities like like oil and copper for example uh having a bit of a sell-off you would expect gold in uncertain times to really kind of go higher but it didn't um for now anyway I'm not saying that it won't in the future but um it didn't have the reaction on the friday that many probably people expected it to but again you would think that with uh, global uncertainty, potential dollar weakening, maybe um, then you would expect gold to actually go to the upside. So in fact, this, you know, the delay in gold going higher um, could actually be a really nice buying opportunity uh, for, for, for guys who actually want to get involved in gold at that 1793 area. Um, and again, you would really only look for short trades on gold if you think that the global uh, economic recovery is, is, is still on, risk on, um, because money would end up piling into the, um, uh, into the dollar for, because dollar the dollar um, gives you a yield, right? People would rather go into government bonds, for example, because gold doesn't pay a yield. But in a, in really uncertain times, uh, gold should want to move to the upside. So if you are looking to buy, now's probably the time. Maybe a bit of a deeper pullback before prices do um, potentially reverse. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. I uh, hope you have a great trading week. And again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, take care until the next week this video.